so hello there welcome to my desk uh, so in this episode what we're going to be doing is we're going to be uh, preparing and gluing our first pieces uh, now what I've done I will just warn you um, I've been out and I've bought some cheap second-hand damaged broken kits um, this is specifically for this series and the reason I've done that is obviously I'm going to be doing various things with model kits uh, and I don't want to spoil the kits that I've got so by using you're going to see over this series lots of different pieces of aircraft um, so it won't be consistent with the build um, but it, these are very very good for demonstrating what I need to do um, so what I have on my desk at the moment is I have an M, uh, MiG-25 and I also have a Eurofighter I believe this is the Eurofighter both in 1-72 to scale and they are absolutely perfect for demonstrating what I need to do um, so we prepared our kit we're ready to go we know what colours we know what aftermarket parts we want to use and I've been very lucky one of the kits I bought seems to have an aftermarket part in the form of a seat uh, which is quite nice however what we're going to be doing is we're going to be preparing and gluing our first pieces uh, so with our instruction manual in front of us uh, what I'm going to be looking at now is the Eurofighter cockpit there is actually a piece missing so I'm not going to be able to do this piece but it will still demonstrate um, so we need to select our pieces unfortunately the cockpit has already been cut off so um, I'm going to switch to my MiG-25 and what we're going to do is we're going to cut the cockpit off uh, sorry the, the main fuselage and we're also going to cut the wings off and yeah so we're going to cut the wings and the fuselage so the equipment we're going to need for this is a good pair of sprue cutters they don't have to be the best but the better the sprue cutters the easier the job uh, these are quite expensive ones but you know I've been building up the hobby over time um, you also need when I file I like these for removing parts off the sprue I have quite an aggressive emery board um, it's very aggressive on that side it's fairly aggressive these are primarily used for filing nails you can buy these in just about any supermarket or, or anywhere you want to go you can buy specialist um, uh, sanding sticks like say for example from Tamiya but these are about 10% of the cost and they do the job perfectly and I've also managed to get hold of one of these um, uh, th this is a sand this is a much less aggressive and a very very fine and a buffing pad um, so what I have here is effectively five grades of sandpaper in a very small area uh, we're also going to need a hobby knife um, there are lots of hobby knives out there but mine the hobby knife of choice is this one um, don't use it that often for cutting parts off because I use my sprue I've got good sprue cutters and sanding and at this point starting the new build it's always best to have a brand new fresh blade it's a little bit of a ritual you always start a new build with a new blade so when we cut pieces off the sprue um, if you cut them fairly close but not enough it's easy to lose where they are um, and also if you've got tiny parts like this for example when you cut it it's very easy to get what I call sprue fling when you cut that piece off that piece could go flying and you'll lose it so when I cut pieces off a sprue I cut them long so you see we've got a sprue bit there and what I'm going to do with my cutters facing away I'm going to cut that you see I've cut that long so where you want the cut to be you have the flat edge of your sprue cutters and I cut that long cut that long and then I can see that this one piece of branch attaches two pieces of uh, fuselage so I'm going to move on to the next piece clip 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 and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the actual sprue arm there 
and that's going to give me two pieces of fuselage so I'm now going to make my first closer cut now with my first basically you want to general rule of thumb the fat part of your sprue cutters is always facing the part that you do not want to damage so you see I've got the flat part there and then we're just going to bring those in like that Can you see and I'm going to cut that there now if these sprue cutters are very very good which these are you can see I've got a very very small nub and also what I've got is I've got some markers there to tell me where the other bits are so it's this is too much because of how long that is but if that was a long let in fact tell you what let's let's do this one then let's go on to another one so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to file that down and then I'm going to switch to a finer grade this is actually not a very good kit to be honest with you but you notice I use my thumb a lot and that's because I'm feeling it can I feel that sprue nub no I can't I'm happy with that now I know that you can see it but the most important bit there we go I think there's a little tiny bit just poking up it's not important that you can see it. it's important that it's not going to add a profile to the model there we go I'm happy with that right so what we're going to do now is we're going to cut this as though the sprue cutters aren't as good oh, do you know what ignore what I'm doing here right so we've cut our sprue and this is this is over exaggerated we see that the sprue cutters haven't been able to cut quite so close to the model so this is now when we switch to our knife and we can just bring our knife in you notice I've put the actual piece that I'm cutting flat on the table this is so that I don't break any other parts while I'm cutting and I'm sorry the camera can't get in and I'm just going to trim that off another way you could trim now all the manuals in the world will tell you always cut away from yourself this is a safety knife and one thing I've noticed with this knife is that if I'm holding the part to cut there with my thumb there and I'm using the base of the blade can you see that if I cut like this and I slit the knife is going to go into my thumb because I'm cutting like this if I should slip can you see that the base of the knife is going to go into my thumb and no damage and we're just gonna now we're not aiming to cut that in one one bit we're aiming to just trim a little bit off and then we trim a bit more off and try to keep the knife level with the parts and we just keep trimming slight bits off there until it's almost there so there we go so then we will finish that off with our sandpaper now you'll see there's a little tab there you do need to be looking at the model and look at the other side as well and it looks to me that that tab might exist to go into do you know what it doesn't it is meant to come off so I've checked that tab before I've cut it off that tab might actually have been a, a, a male connector but it turns out it isn't so now I can cut this off and I just want to say something else about a knife I see a lot of people cutting and they cut like this that is not how a knife works a knife doesn't work by pushing down a knife actually works better as a sawing action so always turn your knife at an angle to what you want to cut and then bring it down slowly and can you see it forces a, a sawing action I'll show you on this piece here so when we cut this off we that's actually too hot too big to cut but um, so if we cut like this 
you see it's got through half of that no problems so then we'll make another cut and that's how we cut with a knife if we were to cut directly downwards see how much more difficult that was that was actually quite difficult but if we move it at an angle like so if I was cutting through my finger I would be cutting like that not like that so I've lost all my spoon nubs now so again little bit of a file with the aggressive sandpaper we're coming in almost there then we just bring the grade down a little bit this is a much finer grade and then a much finer grade just to finish it off and that looks fine and the piece there is fine I think we've just done this but I just shot a piece of, piece of the model on the floor right, and then there's the last one I might just want to trim that with a knife. There we go. Right. Okay, so I'm going to finish this bit off camera. Same principle as before. Uh, trim the end. Like so. File it smooth it onto the next piece okay so I finished trimming those pieces so the next thing and this is a word you will hear me use an awful lot is test fit test fit test fit test fit so what we're going to do is we're going to bring the two pieces together you'll see that there's little ta little male tabs there and little female tabs there so we, we use those to help us line the part up so we can put that one in there and you may want to mask this off once you've done it if you feel the part is springing apart but then find the next male part male and female port and bring the parts together and I can see that that's going to give me a lot of trouble but it seems that the parts but there we go I think maybe I haven't trimmed this well enough on the nose and that's fine this is exactly why we test fit I think I'm gonna have to cut that off because there's a little nub there and it looks like it's meant to be there but once you test fit you can see that it's not meant to be there so and that's a much better fit there is a gap there but I can see there's going to be a nose cone on the end there so I'm not too worried about that and then there's a this is another one of my screw nubs we are going to go over this again later on anyway this is actually a terrible kit I can see now why I, it's been put on eBay as a partly made kit um, so if anybody knows anything about this kit this is a Hobbycraft MiG 25 1-72 Flashpoint fl Fox Bat um, it's not my thing I'm not big into Russian aircraft um, or Russian made aircraft um, but you know it's 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 a model kit and it serves my purpose absolutely perfectly here and then I can see how that's going to go together there and that looks like I've cut the parts off as best I can so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch over to the uh, Eurofighter um, so that I can demonstrate gluing parts together because I think this is going to make an excellent kit to demonstrate gluing. So while I cut these off let me explain to you about glues. Um, now there are hundreds of glues on the market um, but there is essentially three or four types of glue and we can categorize them and we can subcategorize them um, the number one glue if I hold this up ev just about everybody will know exactly what it is um, even the non-modelers 
and that's this little tube called poly cement sometimes this comes in a little plastic um, sort of a, a, a hexagon shape with a little nozzle and all it is is just got a longer nozzle so you can apply it but it's the same thing and this is poly cement and one thing that a lot of people may not necessarily see are these these are made by Tamiya these are exact and this is plastic magic these are all exactly the same glues um, but they all have a slightly different job this is the normal bog standard humbrol cement and it's quite I'm going to just pour a little bit onto a piece of plastic it's quite a thick glue and because it's in a tube it's quite hard to control um, I've just I don't know if you can see there but I've tried to do a little thin line and I've had a lot come out and then none came out and then I got it a bit more consistent now that's not a problem on a piece of plastic but if you're doing that on a model kit it, it could be a problem so the way I tend to use this is I will squeeze some out onto a piece of plastic and then I'll apply it with a cocktail stick so what does a polystyrene cement do well what it actually does it's more of a welder than anything else so what it's going to do is I'm just making a little part that I can glue so what it's going to do is when you apply the polystyrene cement this is polystyrene um, not expanded polystyrene that you know the big white packing things that we use this is just normal straight polystyrene and when you apply glue to it and it's not you're not going to be able to see this but you could probably feel it what that does is it begins to melt the plastic and it makes it softer and it makes it a little slightly liquidy and then when that comes into contact with another piece of polystyrene the top surface then begins to melt and liquidize that surface and then what happens is the little we'll call it a sludge you push them together and the sludges match me and mix and then as they dry out they go hard again and what actually happens is those two, those two pieces of plastic become one that's not two pieces stuck together that is now one piece um, and it's, it's unfortunately I can only explain it like that but that is your most common glue for model kits because that is most of it is made with polystyrene now why do we have different types of glue well we have the different glues for the different applications and different glues are quite convenient for the way that we apply them sorry I'm just trimming this off because I'm going to be using it in a minute um, so if we are applying I'm just looking for little bits that I can trim off to use using the different glues so the advantages, advantages and disadvantages of each glue polystyrene some this polystyrene cement is fine it, it's it's okay to use but um, let's find a really small wheel right okay so here we have two very small wheels this is going to be absolutely perfect so if I want to stick these two wheels together using a tube what I've got to do first of all is I've got to find the point that I'm going to glue so I'm going to glue this side see well that's how small the parts are <laughs> right Sorry guys, did not anticipate, I'll pick that bit up later on. Right, so, we have a wheel here. So, what we're going to have to do, I've got to hold it in my hand. I've then got to apply the, the polystyrene cement. And I'm going to deliberately do this quite badly. Just to demonstrate, so look, I'm applying glue. But because where I'm holding the part, I'm also applying glue onto my finger. It won't do any harm to my finger because my finger's not made of polystyrene cement. 
but to get the parts the glue all around I've got to end up putting it on my finger can you see that there so when I come to place this part on I put that on and then I've accidentally got some that's too thick so it's all squeezed out and then when I come to push those parts together can you see how I've now got that I've got glue everywhere and then as I put the part together I've now got glue on the wheel look at that that's just a complete mess absolutely terrible you know I would expect better from a four-year-old and that's because I've used a glue that has a little bit less control so um, Tamiya among other companies have come out with different glues and they have them with a brush and these are the two main glues I use now we have Tamiya extra thin and this is as you can see it's very very thin it's like water and we have Tamiya normal cement this looks like water in the jar but it's actually quite thick let me find my little piece of sprue and can you see how that's quite thick it looks like a gloss varnish and it's nice and thick and shiny but do you also notice it's slow drying it's, it's taking its time to dry whereas if we apply Tamiya extra thin let's find the back of it All right, so we apply apply the glue and because it's so much thinner you see it dries off rather quickly so that means that if we use this correctly we could use different glues for different things now as a general rule of thumb if I'm going to be gluing two parts together that I can hold together because this is so thin this will run through any gaps so th these ha these parts haven't been prepared so it's not going to work so well but um, so I'm holding the two parts together and then with my Tamiya extra thin can you see where the gap is with the with the wheels what I'm going to do is I'm going to just touch in there I don't know if you're able to see that probably not so what happens is the glue runs in through the gap now that is glued but it's not been glued on the other side it's been just glued enough so now I can just turn that around and I can just finish it off so we just run the glue with the brush so between the thickness of the glue and the fact that we have a um, a brush applicator that is much easier to control so let's compare our two wheels can you see how that is so much more neat and tidy than the tube glue and yes I did purposely make a mess on that but it just goes to show the difference now when I'm using this glue as a general rule of thumb where you can't bring the parts together um, th this actually we can but um, can you see that I'm not going to be able to get underneath the seat very easily so what I will do I can see a point of contact on the seat so what I'll do is I'll use my normal Tamiya or my normal glue which is a little bit slower drying and then I can just apply that exactly um, equally you could apply polystyrene cement with a cocktail stick and then that will stay wet for a little bit longer and then I can bring the part onto there like so voila 
and that will stick on there no problems sometimes you find that you may want to use both glues um, so for example if I was sticking this fuselage together what I might do is I might get it started so with something like a fuselage can you see how this sections of it? it's not all one complete seam all the way round so what I might want to do is get this started with this glue and this isn't the best example of doing this but this is a good example so what I'm now going to do I'm going to glue the front half on and that's on there nicely and so we just really focus on getting this front bit done but can you see now to open this up it's going to be a bit, bit of a problem to get this to get this glue brush in so once that's in place what we can do I don't need to focus on this anymore because that's stuck down enough so now I can hold this together and now I can finish it off with the extra thin and then we just run the glue along there and the capillary action because it's so thin it will run in there quite nicely and then anywhere we need to make the glue now one thing I will say about this you'll notice that sometimes when I'm, I glue I do get glue on the actual model you see there that's not a problem however while that glue is wet do not touch it because as I said before it's actually melted the plastic so really it's a case of um, picking and choosing which glue is best for you um, cost is a factor for me this glue is a lot cheaper than this so I'll try to use this glue um, where I can where it's appropriate so for example I'm, I will definitely, I'm trying to find out which bit of wing is which, I don't think that was the right wing. Um, no, that's not even those wings, there we go, that's this wing. So, no. <laughs> right, so, gluing this wing on, there's a lot of surface area that wants covering, um, but it's also hidden. So that's when I would use a tube glue. You see, I've just done the test fit. Always do a test fit. Always, always. That works fine. So now I can get my cheapo poly cement. I could equally use this cement, but this one's going to be easier. And then giving, starting from the middle. Always start from the middle because, look, oh, I've accidentally got a big splodge in the middle you see I've not damaged my part I can now recover that so now I'll get my cocktail stick and I can spread that about removing any excess where necessary and then we've spread that and because this is a fairly slow drying cement we've got lots of working time and what I like to do with with a part like this I like to go almost to the edge and that will do two things you can see I'm almost to the edge but not right up to it because when you place the wing on it's going to squeeze that glue as as I often say glue squidge right so so even though I made a mistake on there and that that's not the right part of the wing so when I place this glue on, and this wing on, I'll bring it in, and then one other piece of equipment you will need, I think you will need, especially when you're gluing large flat parts, is masking tape. Uh, this is Tamiya tape, but you don't have to use Tamiya tape, just use whatever, whatever masking tape is your preference. 
and I like to just mask that in place at any points that are going to need attention and I've just realized one other thing I haven't mentioned always use glues in a well ventilated area because they do whiff especially this um, Tamiya in a bottle there we go so that's our wing on um, our Tamiya in a bottle has makes a very good point of writing poison on it uh, obviously the poison refers to the drinking but um, obviously equally it could refer to the fumes as well this this says flammable but it doesn't say poison but um, but I wouldn't want to go around drinking these anyway so on that side I deliberately made a mistake um, by accidentally squeezing too much glue um, and this is why it's just showing you why we go in the corner and then this side again I'm going to sorry if we start in the middle not in the corner so we're starting in the middle and we're just building up a consistent consistent amount coming out of the bottle and then fill the rest in and that's probably a really good application there I'm actually really happy with that so we'll pop that on the other side uh, it's that way why did I struggle with that and I know I didn't show you me test fitting but um, I have test fitted lots of times so a little bit of masking um, equally with wings you can use clamps and a lot of people will say you must use clamps and I do sometimes use clamps um, but for smaller models masking tape is fine obviously masking tape in the long run is going to be more expensive uh, and I'm going to need a bit of tape up there as well so just have a look at any bits that are struggling to stick um, that may be struggling to stick because I didn't quite put it in right and there we go and then you can leave that for as long as it needs to take to dry I recommend overnight minimum but that's absolutely fine um, right so let's have um, let's just pretend that we've left this overnight so the next thing we want to do is when we've glued these parts now once they've been glued you need to check them now this is we always knew this was going to be fine but this is the cockpit and that's glued in nicely these wheels are glued in nicely uh, this is definitely glued in nicely so then we want to start hopefully what I've tried to do on this wing is I've missed a little bit out is to show you how we can mix and match the glues so right exactly right so we've got a bit of a gap there where it hasn't quite stuck properly so what we're going to do is we're now going to get our extra thin or if you're very careful we can get some poly cement with a cocktail stick or we can just open that part up a little bit can you, can you see it that's been badly badly glued so we can just open that up gently and then we can just run a bit of glue in there and bring that back and that'll be fine or if you've got something like extra ta uh, extra thin tamia all you need to do is just run or oh, I, I don't think you caught that but that demonstrate the way that the extra thin works perfectly right so hopefully this stays in focus no that didn't didn't do it as well there we go did you see that so as I touched the glue it just went and that ran into there lovely that do you see it run down the side there I mean that's 
that's not the bit we were trying to glue but it just demonstrated it perfectly so what we can now do is run this is why I'm preferring the extra thin because we can run our glue along all of these lines and there's one there and then obviously I want to mask those up again um, so you're not stuck with one glue once you've decided to use polystyrene cement you're not stuck with it um, so we can use um, we, you know start off with poly cement and then finish it off with extra thin and that's absolutely fine so I'm just going to pop I'm going to re be a bit stingy I'm going to reuse these masking tapes right so that is polystyrene cement um, and I'm going to show you another glue and uh, the other glue that we use is sometimes we need to glue together parts that are not polystyrene cement for example we may be gluing photo etch parts to models so for that if I can find it because it's gone missing we use super glue here we are now my super glue of choice so I'm going to have to move my camera um, I have drawers with various things in um, and I have to it's in the way of the camera so I have to move the camera to get to the drawer right so this is super glue this particular one is a super glue gel um, but super glue is generally just super glue uh, my thin super glue of choice is on my shelf was on my shelf it is on my shelf um, now super glues you can buy from pound land pound shops anything like that um, I like these small ones because I tend to find that once you've opened the tube they dry up really really quickly this has actually been sold as single use um, so rather than buying also one two three ten pack there so rather than buying 10 grams I prefer the individual 10, ten uh, 1 grams but these work exactly the same as any other super glue the difference between these two is that let me just put this away there we go um, the difference between the two is that these tend to run away with you very very easily right, and they can get messy so you take the lid off usually on the lid there's a little spike in there and you'll just run that spike into the super glue and then we'll put the lid on and now we have a handy nozzle applicator but even though we have a handy nozzle applicator I still like to just pop a little bit onto onto plastic and I would expect if I come back to that in a couple of days that will be completely dried up um, now on the other hand this is super glue gel don't tell me it's run out it's a brand new bottle do you have to shake this right there we go so this is much thicker and I don't know if you'll be able to see this so we have the pile we have thin there and thick there now if I can you see how thin that is now thin does have its uses but I do prefer uh, thick now super glue doesn't do anything to the actual plastic um, all it does is so let's just pretend for the sake of this video that this is made of metal the polystyrene cement isn't going to work um, because it's not going to melt it's not going to stick to the metal so with things like photo etch parts we need to apply super glue and what super glue does is it creates a film that sticks to that end and the other side of the film sticks to um, the other side and the when we apply the super glue and in this case there's not any difference between thick or thin but I'm going to apply a little bit of thin onto here 
and this is hopefully going to demonstrate perfectly the difference so all it's doing is creating a bond between the two and it's the best way to describe it is if you have two people that are deeply in love and they are hugging each other and they're embracing each other their arms are around each other and they are actually merged as one if however they have a child they're walking down the road with a child in the middle one's holding the hand of one child one's holding the hand of the other child they are still one unit now the first example where they're embracing each other that's going to be really hard to separate and if I can find the piece that I glued earlier there we are this isn't fully cured so this might not work but if I remove these pieces it actually that didn't demonstrate but quite often what you find is when you break these two pieces they won't break at the, where the glue is they will actually break where the plastic is it will always break at the weakest point yeah it's because they're not fully cured now super glue can you see that that is fully that's that's stuck now that can still be broken which is not going to do on this right can you see that it broke where the super glue was it's the super glue that came away now there is there is damage to the parts in the sense that there is super glue residue on there but the parts are still okay they could still be salvaged if I'd have stuck that with um, plastic magic Tamiya cement or polystyrene cement it would actually have damaged the parts so glue is only a bond um, it, it just holds the two parts together so there we go that's the super glue now the third glue that we will use quite commonly and I don't have any in its basic form and that's PVA glue I do have it in the form of micro crystal clear um, I didn't realize when I bought this that this is this is essentially PVA glue so I've spent six pounds on a little tub of one fluid ounce when I could buy like a litre for about four or five pounds um, now when do we use PVA glue well we use PVA glue for mainly for parts that we want to attach temporarily and also for canopies I don't think this is the right or maybe it is so um, has anybody seen these crime busting programs like CSI um, where they want to get fingerprints off plastic bags and what they do is they put they put the bag in a box uh, like a incubator type box and they put loads of super glue in the bottom and they heat it up and the fumes come up and the fumes stick to the fingerprint the grease on the fingerprint and you can get an absolute perfect fingerprint match that is exactly what super glue will do super glue gives off fumes and if you if you attach this with super glue it will give off fumes your canopy will cloud up and it will look absolutely terrible equally if you use polystyrene cement again you could have the same problem so the way around that is that we use PVA glue or in this case micro crystal clear and it's applied in exactly the same way it doesn't give off fumes it isn't going to damage your your part and although this is a white glue this will actually dry crystal clear 
and you won't even know it's there and there we go there's, there's our third glue now that will take quite a while to dry and you see there I've got a little bit of a splodge that's absolutely fine because super glue is water soluble so once that's glued on there I haven't put enough glue and I haven't got a good fit right so what we want to do maybe we want to apply a lot more right so we we can put lots and lots of that glue on and we can apply it and it will fill holes and there we go and then any excess we can wipe off with a cotton bud that's an ill fit that's either an ill fitting part or I have put the wrong canopy on because I don't think I put the wrong canopy on that is an absolutely terrible fit I can see why yeah that's definitely not that one yeah I can see now why people are selling these on eBay right there we go so there's our canopy now that looks awful at the moment because there's glue everywhere but that glue will turn white now the disadvantage with PVA glue um, it, it's a bit of a double-edged sword it's it's as good and it's bad that canopy will not clear uh, will not cloud up now um, but the bond isn't going to be so strong so quite often people will use PVA glue uh, maybe for attaching wings or things if they're going to be taking their models to shows um, under carriage things like that um, when you transport a model any bits that are sticking out there's always a chance that um, sorry I'm just I think I've stuck that canopy on the wrong way around or the wrong place yeah that's why it's not stuck on anyway um, yeah so when people transport their models there's always a chance that parts could fall off that looks odd I can't see how that's going to fit it was it's on backwards that's why it won't fit right so again but then again can you see that I I took that off and I've stuck that back on so um, that's the great thing about PVA being so so slow to dry um, so yeah when you transport models if you've got little bits that stick out canopies wings um, and they're easy to knock off and uh, if you apply PVA glue the parts can be removed or if they get knocked off they will come off a little bit easier but then all you need to do is just apply a little bit of PVA glue pop it on give that a few hours that will go clear and then there's your canopy back on and then um, so another time you might want to use it is if you're not actually sure if that's the option you want do I want that canopy open or closed well at the moment it's closed but if I decide actually I don't like that I want it open I can now remove it look can you see that you've got all that stringiness look well that's actually easy to remove look I just wipe it it's exactly the same as PVA glue um, and that's basically what it is um, in fact I feel that I'm sure this isn't the exact same formula as PVA glue but I kind of feel a bit robbed by buying that right so I've kind of gone a little bit off track and back on and off track a bit um, but essentially there's three kinds of glues there is a fourth kind of glue that I don't use very often and that's um, uh, epoxy putty epoxy resin um, it's a two-part resin 
I think I'll do a separate video on it in the future because it's used for, for uh, resin parts um, again just like um, uh, super glue sorry polystyrene cement doesn't work on resin because resin isn't polystyrene so again you, so if you bought an aftermarket pot um, let's say this was an aftermarket cockpit you can't attach that and it won't stay in in there because the polystyrene won't affect the resin so you normally use a two-part epoxy glue it in five minutes it's stuck in but then you want to cure it overnight so that is that is it guys that is everything so we have been cutting pieces off the sprue we've been gluing them together and then in the next video I will remove that and I will remove it on camera so you can show how weak but also useful I mean look that's it is a good glue look you see after a few minutes it's strong enough to hold it on but equally I can remove it and clean up um, but that I'll leave this on we'll remove that in the next video next week um, but yeah so this cleans up nicely um, so it's very handy if you want parts that you think are going to break off um, so you want to repair them or canopies where that glue will not fog up um, so you'll keep the good canopy um, we've also got our wing and this is going to come in useful in later videos um, so I think and yes I am aware that I haven't put the cockpit in and that is done on purpose um, because I want to deal with cockpits in another video but that's not a little bad little model really is it I wasn't interested in that but I bought it because it was you know it's a kit that's been broken um, but actually now that I've got the wings and the fuselage on I'm thinking that's quite nice so you may see a Eurofighter coming to my channel at some point in the future right guys so that's it for me for this video uh, thank you very much for watching I'm now going to put all these bits away and then uh, hopefully I'll catch you in another video take care guys bye bye Thank <laughs> you.